This video will talk about how to do an analysis of covariance in R. The data set I'm going to use is the fish data set. Remember, these are the data that have all of the fish measurements from a lake in Finland. So I'm going to load the tidyverse library, then I'm going to read in this fish data set called fish. So you can see I have 157 different observations in the fish data set. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to filter the data just to give me the two species that I want. In this case, the two species I'm interested in are bream and pike. And so I'm going to use the filter function, and then I'm going to ask what species, give me all the species that are inside bream and pike. And so I'm going to run that line of code. And then you'll see my number of observations went down to 51 observations. So now I want to plot the data. So remember when we do an analysis of covariance, we're interested in testing whether or not the slopes are equal between two different categories along a covariant. What this means is that we're going to plot the length of the fish on the x-axis, the weight of the fish on the y-axis, and I want to color them by species. So I want to know the differences between the pike and the bream and give me different colored lines for those. So I'm going to plot a point. I want to, I'm interested in the scatter plot. And then I'm going to do a stat smooth and plot the linear regression line or the LM model. And so I'll run this block of code. And you can see, uh, I'll zoom in here on what we're looking at. But the data in red are the bream, the data in blue are the pike. And you can see just by quickly glancing at the graph across all values length, our covariate, it seems that they are equal slopes. Um, now we could stop here and just be lazy and say, they're, yep, they're equal slopes. Let's go ahead and do the analysis of covariance. But we want to statistically test that. Um, and so we'll do some more digging to actually test if these slopes are equal. And that's what I do next here in the code. So I'm going to ask the question, are the slopes equal? Well, the next thing I'm going to do is just make two different data sets, one called Pike and one called Bream. And so these two data sets will have only the observations of Pike and Bream in different sets of data. And when I do this, you'll see that there, in the Bream data set, there are 34 observations. In the Pike data set, we have 17 observations. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fit a simple linear regression to each of the Pike and the Bream data sets. And so we've done this before. I'm going to call this Pike.LM. I want to predict the weight based on the length, and my data are in the Pike data set. And I'm going to do that separately for the Bream data set. And I'm going to plot the summary for each of those so that I know what the coefficients are. I can get the values of beta 0, beta 1, the standard errors. And so I could go up into the code and look at those different values from the regression. And in this case, you'll see in the next video, we actually pull out the values for the slopes because we're going to test whether or not they're equal. And we're going to do that by hand. But here we see the slope is 54.108 for the Bream data set. And for the Pike data set, it's 53.195. And so those values intuitively seem about, not necessarily equal, but close enough. Uh, and so we're going to go through and, and look at that. So you can see the values are quite equal. Another way to test if the slopes are equal is to fit what we call a full model with interaction, and then a reduced model with no interaction. And so this is the code to run the analysis of covariance in R. We're going to call it fish.full. Remember, we're predicting the weight. We have our covariate of length. And we have our species, or our treatment group. And the way to test with the interaction, just like you might remember from the two-way analysis of variance, is we'll put a star here. And the star here will indicate we want to run a, think about it as a main effect for the length, and a main effect for the species. And then we'll have a interaction effect between those two. And so we'll do that on the fish.full data set. Now remember, this is uh, all of the pike and bream observations together. And if we do ANOVA of that object, we'll get the ANOVA table. And so that's what you're seeing here. So this is just the analysis of variance table. 
we have the main effect for the length and the species, and then the interaction effect between length and species, along with the residuals. So that's the full model. What if we remove the interaction? And so in this case, the, the code is the exact same. The only difference is instead of a multiply sign, we put a plus sign. And so in this case, the plus sign will say, run a main effect for the length, run a main effect for the species, and that's it. Don't worry about the interaction. We're going to remove the interaction from this uh, data set or this uh, model run. And so we can click run. And so what you can see is you get the main effect for length, the main effect for species, but we don't have one for the interaction because we didn't tell the model to give an interaction effect. And so that's the analysis of variance, or sorry, the analysis of covariance in a reduced model format. What I really like about this ANOVA function is that you could add multiple model objects in it to say whether or not they're equal. In this case, whether or not the slopes are equal, because we're interested in that in the context of this analysis of covariance. And so we're going to type the full model and then the reduced model, and we're going to write ANOVA. So remember, the null hypothesis is that the slopes are equal. The alternative hypothesis is that they are not equal. And so what we see here is we get an analysis of variance table, but we're only comparing two different tables, so to speak. Model 1 is the model with the interaction. Model 2 is the model without the interaction. We have the degrees of freedom here, the residual sums of squares, uh, the degrees of freedom, the sums of squares representing the difference, and then we have a value for the f, and then we have a p-value. Now what you can notice here is that the p-value is quite high, 0.8469. So if we were to run this hypothesis test at a level of significance at something like 0.05, well, in our case, we would accept the null hypothesis. We don't have any evidence that these two models are any different. That would say that we can state that the slopes are equal. In this case, the probability uh, that that value is greater than f is quite high. And so the p-value is high. We can conclude that we can accept the null hypothesis that the two slopes are equal. And so in this case, this is how we might run an analysis of covariance. Now we know we are safe to move ahead, use length as our covariate to predict the weight of a fish, and use the species as two different uh, treatments or two different factors that might help to uh, say something about the weight of the fish. And this is how you can see how this is a blend of both analysis of variance and regression. You can think of it as, well, we're using the species to run the analysis of variance part, but we're running the length, or we're using the length to say something about the regression part of the analysis of covariance. And so this is a useful approach if you have both a mix of treatment level variables like species and continuous level variables like length to predict something that you're interested in, like the weight of the fish. And so this code should be helpful for doing analysis of covariance in the future.